Welcome to a Stanford Medicine 25 video on Introduction to the Ultrasounds. Hi, my name is Dr. John Kugler, and this is the introductory to point of care or bedside ultrasound as part of the Stanford 25 series. Today our goal will be for you to learn how to use uh, the ultrasound machines we have available here, which is going to be the Sonosite Model S and the Sonosite M Turbo. Our goal will be for you to uh, learn how to correctly choose a probe, uh, depending on which exam you're doing, and how to use the what we call knobology, or to use the buttons that are available on the machines uh, to give you the best possible exam you can. All right, let's get started with choosing a probe. The first probe that I'm going to uh, show you here is what's called the linear probe. This is going to be the probe you want to reach for if you're doing procedures. The reason for that is it has uh, high frequency ultrasound beams, which don't give you a lot of depth. You can only go as deep as six centimeters into the body, but it gives you very, very high resolution to see fine structures. So when you're looking for veins for the central venous line catheter, um, this is the probe that you want to use. What you do need to know about it is it does have a probe indicator on the side that will correspond to the uh, dot on the screen there. And that'll let you know uh, what your orientation is. The next probe I want to show you is what's referred to as a, the abdominal probe, is what many people refer to it as, uh, or the curvilinear probe is its technical name. This is going to give you a much uh, broader depth of field because it has a very wide footprint um, and it has very low frequency ultrasound beams which gives you a lot of depth so you can see up to 30 centimeters into the body. This is going to be a great probe if you want to look at the liver, if you want to look at the kidneys, or if you want to look at other structures in the abdomen. The last probe that we use in internal medicine uh, is this probe, which is a phased array probe, or other people refer to it as the cardiac probe. The reason we call it that is because it's really good at doing echocardiography. The reason for that is it has a small footprint. This allows the ultrasound beam uh, to effectively go between the ribs and to give you uh, a view of the heart without any rib shadow. This is a great probe for doing echo. Um, you can also look into the abdomen with it as well, um, but it's going to give you a smaller field than the curvilinear probe. It's also excellent for assessing sizes uh, of pleural effusions because, again, you can look between the ribs to assess the size. Once you've chosen the probe, you need to make sure you know how to attach it correctly. Right now, the linear probe is in place, and if we want to switch that out for the cardiac probe, I'm going to lift up this bar here on the back of the machine. I'm going to twist it, and it comes right out. Very simple. We'll take our new probe and we'll place it in like this, twist, and we lock it into place. And that's all. All right. On the Model S machine, this is available on uh, Ward B3 in room 9. Um, this is the on-off button. Very straightforward. Plug the machine in, um, hit the button to turn it on. It actually has a battery, so you don't always need to plug it in. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the buttons you need to be familiar with, let's just start with auto gain. Um, this button is actually very useful. Once you plug the probe in, this will essentially uh, be working. You may need to adjust the gain manually down here, but usually just hitting the auto gain will reset it uh, and give you good quality. The gain down here will essentially make the screen more white. It amplifies the signal. Sometimes you do need to manually adjust this in order to make the image as clear as possible. The other button that you're going to need to know really well is depth. And this is one you'll probably need to adjust for every patient. Um, this essentially gives you more depth as you rotate it. And you can see the numbers going up here in the, in the corner. These are set to centimeters. Essentially, you want to make sure that what you're most interested in, what you're focusing on, falls essentially in the middle of the screen. That's going to give you the best resolution. So you want to adjust your depth so your image falls in that area. The other buttons you should be familiar with here are going to be your freeze frame. So if you're looking at something and you want to take a measurement, you can hit the freeze button in order to do measurements. And the save button if you want to save a loop to review that later. Um, really, with just these few buttons, you should be able to take care of almost everything you'll need to do. On to the M-Turbo. This is the machine that you'll find in the ICU and in the ER here at Stanford. For this machine, you'll find the on-off button right here. Um, it opens like a laptop. And then, just to review the same buttons as we saw in the Model S, um, you're going to find the auto gain button here. And then this is your manual gain control 
uh, here on the corner. Again, if we want to turn this up, we'll see that we're going to increase the signal, and Dan will do less signal. The other buttons, again, you should know about are the depth. This one, instead of a dial, you actually have buttons, so I want to give a greater depth of field. Again, I just press down, it gets deeper, and this takes it the other way. Uh, if I want to freeze, it has a nice big freeze button that I can hit. And then if I want to start it again, I just hit the freeze button again. And here is your save button over here in the corner, again, very easily marked. This has been another Stanford 25 Medicine presentation. Thanks for watching. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.